Our next speaker is Shailesh Atali, Senior Vice President of Product Management. Shailesh will share how the Qualys Enterprise True Risk Platform can or help organizations de-risk the business. Please welcome Shaila Shatale. All right, awesome. That was an amazing keynote from uh, Rachel and Sumed. Uh, but as uh, Sumed knows, like everybody knows from even yesterday, I'm, I'm a big uh, Indiana Jones fan, and, and what a privilege. It was amazing treat yesterday to, to uh, have the session in the theme of Indiana Jones. So let's, let's quickly see, right, like what Indiana Jones, because it's just my favorite character, what, what he did uh, in the Raiders of the uh, Lost Ark. Uh, the first thing what he did is found out that the Ark is his crown jewel, right? Then the second thing what he looked at doing is looked at like all the risk which could be there in stealing all of that ark, whether they would come from the road, land, water, etc. Importantly, if you guys notice, he actually conveyed that risk differently to the US government in the treasure terms. He conveyed that risk to his friends, Marian and others, so that they would help him. And then the third thing, if you guys remember, he looked at the vulnerability that the ark could be stolen from the air, the aircraft, so he sort of patched it, so he, he, he dropped that airplane down. And that nicely ties to what Sumed was talking about, is you don't want to be the Indiana Jones who's getting bulldozed by that uh, big rock of uh, findings of security issues, but you want to be the Indiana Jones in cybersecurity who are looking at the risk, measuring it, they're communicating that to the stakeholders correctly, and then eliminating that risk by working with the stakeholders. Now, all of this sounds exciting, fantastic, and then obviously, like as you guys would all think that, yeah, but there are a few challenges there. And there are a few steps. The security teams, what we've been talking with, uh, some of the product advisory board members yesterday, were saying or telling that they are taking. Right? The number one part, what they talk about in terms of challenges, is essentially to measure the risk. What's the step zero? Right? Like knowing what's there in my environment. And that becomes the number one challenge. In terms of that, like we are all dependent on the CMDBs. And like two years back, what happened, Lock4j, when you went to the IT team and asked them, hey, could you give me the report of assets which are external facing and how the applications which are using Lock4j? didn't get those answers from them, right? And then now, as the holiday season is going to pop up, they're going to spin up a bunch of assets, and they're not going to tell you. But importantly, they're not going to tell you what's running on those assets. And that becomes many a times the risk blind spot for you as the cybersecurity expert, right? What's running on these assets and where these assets are? If you look into the report, there are whopping 35% of the assets the data states the security teams don't know about, but they are on short and dark web, that means your attackers know about. And then another interesting data point is what CISA talks about, every asset should be running antivirus. The data shows that 20% of the assets are not running any kind of antivirus. Cause the teams in cyber do not know where these assets are and what they are running. But importantly, the second part, more than the inventory of the cyber risk, is the context of the business. How do cyber teams know that what's the context of risk from this inventory? And if you see uh, mapping to the business, when we look into the data again, 45% of the assets are misclassified as low priority assets. And we looked at that from the indicator, if that's a server, if that's a database, et cetera, but were not marked as critical. Now, downside of that is, if you look into doing the security assessment for all of these assets, which are not necessarily critical or are deprioritized, you're paying that as a price in terms of time you're putting in at the end game, because all of these assessments, vulnerabilities, related patches are given to your IT team and they're patching it for the machines, they probably shouldn't have patched or could have kept it on low priority. And on that 
cost or time, they're not patching the ones which mattered. And the data shows that it's taking around 80 hours to make that unknown asset as asset, which is known to the cyber team, and prioritizing that for patching it for the right vulnerabilities. Now, the second challenge, even if we know all of these assets and the attack surface, the second challenge becomes essentially is knowing what are all the risk factors you need to collect data for, right? You need to collect the data for vulnerabilities, for infrastructure, for open source software, for web application risk, for sensitive data risk, for misconfigurations in cloud, and all of these risk factors, when you look at collecting the data, you need to collect it comprehensively across all of your environment, not just for on-premise, but even for cloud. But the most important part is collecting the data accurately, and that becomes one of the biggest challenge. Sumit talked about the data in terms of how many vulnerabilities, what Qualys looked at, which are riskiest out there, which includes CISA vulnerabilities, exploitable vulnerabilities. It's around 5,000 of vulnerabilities. But look at the one in the middle circle. 80% of those are remotely exploitable. That means if we use just the agent-based approach, you're not going to be able to accurately detect or assess these vulnerabilities which are remotely exploitable. Now, this is just for the infra vulnerabilities, right? The second part of that is the open source. The biggest issue right now going on for the security teams who are managing responsible for the security in production. You're not getting the visibility of where these open source softwares are and if they're vulnerable. What data shows, again, what Qualys research team looked at, it's probably not going to be log4j, but is that going to be related to Python this time? There are 10 million installations of Python across the assets, and each of those assets have 56 vulnerable OSS packages. Now, not necessarily all are exploitable, all are risky, et cetera, but the part is, are we assessing them? And that becomes important for you to get visibility into all of these vulnerabilities for that. The third piece becomes is making sure all of your web app-related risks are assessed. And again, the data is interesting. There are actually external-facing web applications on which there are millions of vulnerabilities, what our research team saw, which probably the customers are not looking at because you're not scanning it from the external to in aspect for all of these web applications which are just external facing. Now, once we collect all of these data across all of these environment, you know, you will be doing it additionally to all of these risk factors, right? You're going to do it for cloud misconfigs, you're going to do it for the access controls, end of life, end of service, et cetera, across all of these environments. The second part which is not happening is how important these are for us. Like yesterday, I think somebody from the healthcare industry was talking about how do we actually know that a certain vulnerability or the issue is related to my industry? Is that vulnerability being talked about a dark web or not? Is this is the vulnerability, has that ever used? I think Rachel talked about that. If you are getting exposed and attacked by exploiting one vulnerability, are you actually looking into that that this is already used by some attackers out there in the wild. So how do we get that mapping of what is the threat out there and all of these risk factors which I'm assessing or getting the data for? Now, and then the last but important part is when all of these come together, instead of getting the top 10s like Sumit talked about, like I could have top 10 misconfigurations in cloud, top 10 vulnerabilities, et cetera, is that any toxic combination what I see? If there's an employee laptop has um, clear text password, which is actually managing most of your cloud database, is that a toxic combination? So all of these becomes the data collection challenges and marrying that with the threat intelligence. And then importantly, everybody's favorite topic, as you might relate to it, if you are the cybersecurity and the cyber risk person, look at the amount of data, what you need to produce and communicate that to all of these teams. Your bosses are asking you reports, and then you need to massage it, take it in Excel sheet, put a nice PowerPoint, provide the high-level data. You need to provide that for your cloud configs or the application-related vulnerabilities to only your app teams. And then the auditor is going to ask you, like, I don't care, just give me the mapping of how you're failing password policy 
in terms of I-5. And all of that is not enough with all of these new age architectures coming up with open source vulnerabilities. If you find them, they're all going to ask you if this is the right vulnerability, is that getting assigned to the right user or not? And that becomes one of the biggest challenge what Sumit talked about is time to communicate, is providing the right issue to the right team with right context. And then importantly, there is no prize if we are doing all of these together, but are still not being able to remediate or eliminate the risk. Because today the problem is it is based on the IT driven patching and not really the risk based patching. And one of the other reason for that is for cybersecurity teams to look at is closing the vulnerability is not equal to patch. If you look into print nightmare or spectra or meltdown, they needed you to put superseding patches and registry change or config change. And that's why there was back and forth that, hey, I close it with patch, but the vulnerability is still showing up. So you need to now again produce what exactly it needs to close the risk of the vulnerability to the right teams, what we talked about. So providing exact thing, what they can apply in their environment so that it closes the vulnerability. And then all of these things, what we are assessing, what we talked about, if you just pack them and produce them in front of IT teams, these are all the reports, they would look into it and do nothing about it. The reason for that is their job is all taken by all these 48,000 patches which Microsoft released from last 12 months. 48,000 patches they need to take into, and then plus these box of vulnerability reports, they need to interpret the KBs, and I haven't met anybody who loves reading KB articles from the IT team. So now the other part, what you need to understand is, is are there any low-hanging fruits what I have in my environment? And when we looked at the data, interestingly, when we looked at which customers are successfully using our patch management, right? What is it that they're doing? And when we looked at the data, this is interesting. The average number of vulnerabilities in enterprise environments, when you look at it, 440K vulnerabilities. But look at the percentage of vulnerabilities due to third-party software on just workstation asset. That means the whole logic of my machine going down and the risk of that is not applicable here. In fact, the risk of ransomware vulnerability getting exploited on that workstation is much higher than that patch putting that machine down. So when you look at the low-hanging fruit, one-third of these vulnerabilities are for third-party software, which your traditional IT teams are not able to patch, and that becomes a challenge of producing that rightly in front of your IT teams. And then the other part, interestingly, is what, what again, like Sumed and Rachel talked about, right? The returning attacks on the environment and the data never lies, it keeps on repeating every year. 2021, 80% of these suffered ongoing attacks. 67 suffered another attack in just 12 months. What could be the reason? And the reason for that is, all of these attacks, when you look at happening, and I'm talking about all the high-profile attacks, they are all happened by exploiting known vulnerability or known misconfiguration. And all are at map to Conti, Petia, Reveal, but the teams did not know exactly which vulnerabilities or misconfigurations I need to prioritize and what's going to be the benefit downstream for that. And with all of these challenges, what we look at providing is the solution which essentially the cybersecurity and the, uh, the risk team need to look into is all these risk factors, what we talked about, right? They essentially get divided or they get applicable into five buckets that you need to do your asset management well, vulnerability management well, then remediate the risk, know these, all these threats, and then respond and then give the compliance report. You obviously need to do it across your environment, and that's exactly what your Qualys platform understands and provides you the multi-sensor approach. When you, if you have the desktops, it provides the cloud agents. If you have the data center asset, it provides the network scanner or the passive sensor to collect the data. If you have, in fact, the cloud-based assets, it provides a way to collect the data through APIs, 
through snapshots, through agent, or through scanner. If you have Office 365, it in fact provides the SaaS connector to pull the data from your SaaS applications. And when all of these data come back on the platform, it gets natively correlated with what are the threats out there in the wild which are applicable to all of these asset vulnerability, remediation, and threat-related data. All of this then gets correlated with what is the criticality of the asset on which all of these are found, and then provides you the orchestration for you to know what's your true risk. And that makes Qualys' enterprise true risk platform, what Sumit just talked about. And now when we unveil all of these things, how they happen, the first step, what we want to do by leveraging the integrated capabilities of the tourist platform is now knowing what is in my environment. And that's where the platform provides, again, a way for you to collect all of your assets by using multi-sensor approach. Addition to that, we are excited to talk about in the, in the post-noon session on our passive sensing ability in the same agent, which can be deployed per subnet for you to know 100% of your assets, which could be known, unknown, unauthorized, or rogue, but are internal to your environment. Addition to that, once you know all of your internal assets, that means your internal attack surface, we expanded the capability for you to know what is your external attack surface looks like by scanning the likes of Shodan, who is, or the dark web, for you to know if you have any assets exposed on them for your attackers, which are unknown to you. And if that's not enough, we now tap into all the third-party asset directories or asset inventories, such as ServiceNow, BMC, VMware, Active Directory, two ways. That means one way to sync up all of these data, what quality sensors are finding out, to provide that as an enrichment for your CMDBs, but also collecting the business criticality data if this particular asset is used by my checkout app or not, if this particular asset is used by my, um, uh, for my sales portal or not, to know the criticality of this asset, what Qualys has found out, to provide you how you can manage the inventory risk for your environment, meaning knowing all of your attack surface, but also what is running on all of these assets. It's nothing like just collecting the inventory data, but not providing the metadata around it. So how do we actually know what is the metadata, what this asset contains? If this particular asset is having the end-of-life or end-of-service software running or not, if that machine is actually running or not running any kind of antivirus, if that particular machine is running any unauthorized software, why should there be Firefox running on machine which are tagged as databases? Qualys platform is able to provide you what could be unauthorized for you based on your condition. So meaning our asset research team is cataloging all of this inventory data, asset data, and making sure all of this inventory is available to you with business and cyber context. What's the benefit of that for your IT team? The IT teams who've been taking the data from the cybersecurity part of Qualys uh, to this platform has created the baseline 60% faster than the one what they did not have before. 60% faster baseline for their CMDBs. And then for cybersecurity team, they're tapping into the inventory data related to how critical the business is and mapping that for doing your risk management from business side. Now with all of this strong foundation of knowing what's there in your environment, what Qualys provides now, the platform, is ability for you to measure risk by collecting all the risk factors, what we just talked about. Now, this is one of the amazing slides, what our graphic artist created. So you, you guys need to stop doing the multitasking. This is important. So, so Qualys platform, now you know all of your inventory, now is going to now collect all these risk factors, what we talked about. The first part, what do you want to do? You want to first now know what are the vulnerabilities which could be remotely exploitable in my environment. That means you would be knowing the likes of move it vulnerability, paper cut vulnerability. Otherwise, you would be missing by just using the agent-based approach. 
what's the second step you want to do? Now, it provides you ability for you to know what are the locally exploitable vulnerabilities in your environment using the Asian approach. For you to know if you have exchange vulnerability which is locally exploitable, or 3CX software which has the vulnerability which could be locally exploitable. What's the third step you want to do now when you have the visibility in all of these? Now, again, another exciting capability what Qualys agent just launched recently is the same agent having ability to scan all of your production environment by doing the deep scan and finding out if you have open source vulnerabilities for the likes of Java, Python, .NET, Ruby, and you say it, and all of these detections are possible for you to collect now data for open source software. Additionally, now you collect the data for all of your web apps related risk so that you know if you have web application related risk or not. And all of these data, it talks about like Apache struts, log4j, et cetera. Now, as this data gets collected, you would be having your cloud environment. What do we do about that? It provides a mechanism for you to also collect the cloud misconfigurations data, which is the likes of S3 buckets open or the infra-related misconfigurations, which are the likes of RDP misconfiguration or excessive permission two of the biggest attack vectors in ransomware what are provided in seven years of ransomware attack, RDP misconfigurations and excessive admin permission. What's the next thing what we just talked about? Having ability for you to know if there are any cloud-related misconfigurations. Now, with all of these risk factors getting collected by Qualys platform, what does it do? It gets all of this data and normalizes all of these for you to understand if they are related to any kind of asset inventory risk, what we talked about. If these assets on which you found that there is a remotely exploitable vulnerability, does it, pres does it have presence on Shodan? Is that existing with no antivirus on this machine? So providing you the normalized way to know if it is having a toxic combination by normalizing all of these data. Now, addition to that, when all of this data gets normalized, what's the next thing what the platform provides is correlating all of this data with 25 plus threat feeds. And they get mapped for you to know if these all these risk factors are getting used by any attacker out there in the wild related to my industry. Is this particular vulnerability is used by any threat actor related to your industry? if you have any vulnerability which is exploited by any malware out there. So providing that correlation with all this data collected, and then again, the correlation with what your business is saying is critical. So tapping directly the data from your service now, Active Directory, or you defining it in Qualys, if all of this data is applicable to my critical checkout, banking, sales portal related apps or not, for you to understand what's your risk, across your environment, and that's how comprehensively the true risk provides a quantified score for you to provide to various stakeholders in your environment. Nothing hidden, everything transparent. Now, once all of this data is collected, what's the next thing what you want to say is how useful it's been for our customers. The customers who have operationalized true risk, What's the benefit they have received? When we looked at all of this data, they had to prioritize 85% lesser vulnerabilities. Look at the number of hours you, your IT teams are going to save from all of these uh, less number of vulnerabilities. But what's the benefit for you as cyber risk professionals, right? For the risk, 80% lower number of ransomware vulnerabilities. Seven years of attack data, whatever vulnerability has been exploited, the true risk automatically considered the priority of the vulnerabilities and have 80% less number of those for customers who operationalize that. Now, with all of this true risk which is measured, we provide a mechanism for you to now communicate this risk. Sumit talked about that, so we are coming out with the true risk report which I'm going to absolutely demo, which allows you to provide the report which is uplifted for your executives to know what my risk looking like, what are the contributing factors, who or which business units is responsible for this. 
So it talks the language of executives and then provides actionable recommendations where you can actually reduce this risk by providing top 10 misconfigs, top 10 web app related risk, et cetera, which you can concentrate on. Same way, we are providing free external attack surface management report for you to understand if you have any assets which you do not know about and what's their risk looking like. And then attack that report as well. But additionally, really important if you are an operational person, if you want to provide these to your managers who are just managing a particular area, such as cloud risk, web application risk, such as inventory risk, et cetera, it provides customizable dashboards for the true risk, which you can provide to the, uh, the area or the risk managers for them to know what's my cloud risk looking like, what is just the misconfiguration risk looking like, with the insights on if there are any factors which are toxic, meaning are there any factors which are coming in from the other risk areas, if there are any on-premise related vulnerabilities, are the reason why cloud risk has gone up, which typically is not provided by just cloud-only risk management player. And importantly, it also provides a mechanism for you to talk with your SOC team. What is SOC team caring about? Everyone heard about MITRE? What they care about is what is my defense posture going to look like against the MITRE attack techniques? So we are excited to provide that all the CVEs, QIDs, and the control IDs from policy compliance are already cross-mapped to MITRE attack techniques for you to know how many or which MITRE attack techniques you are susceptible for, where your risk is, where you can concentrate on, and provide it to your SOC team so that they can heighten the alerting for those machines quickly. What's the other thing what, what we are going to talk about, right? Like the auditors, everybody wants the reports in the way they want. Qualys platform provides mapping to 50 plus mandates. NIST, GDPR, you talk about that and there is a mandate available for you to cross map all the data what Qualys is providing, talking the language, what your auditors want to talk about is this language. What are the mandate requirements and what risk of compliance do I have? So ability for you to quickly collect this and produce that in the manner your auditor would like to see the risk. Now, this is the communication what it provides to your auditors out of box. What's the other communication what you want to provide is providing that to your IT team. And this has been one of the biggest challenge. It provides easy rule-based automation for you to just create rules. Create a rule if this particular vulnerability is for ransomware. Does it have high true risk? And if it is related to my business critical app checkout app, and if it is related to maybe an application server and not infrastructure, so that it gets created as a ticket downstream in their own system where you do not have to create those tickets manually. All of this automation allows you to communicate better and saves your time. And then everybody's uh, favorite question, what IT team tells or, or ask, this is not my machine, this is not my vulnerability. How are we solving that? I'm seeing like few heads nodding, like few, few smiles there. When the true risk gets collected, it provides now a downstream mechanism for it to again normalize the data and correlate that with what it takes to close the risk of the vulnerabilities. What is the exact patch, exact misconfiguration, what you need to fix and how it can be fixed. It again, it makes sure that it contextualizes if this particular asset is owned by which team, based on which it automatically creates the ticket in ServiceNow. With an app which resides in ServiceNow or Jira or the likes of other ITSM, where the right team gets the ticket created with the right context, where the DevOps team create, gets the ticket if there's a vulnerability related to open source where if there's a cloud team, all the cloud misconfigurations are automatically going to their team if there's a cloud misconfiguration with the context of what it needs to fix it with right bucket ID, with right account ID in there. And what's the other part is providing that to your app team. There's a vulnerability. I mean, all the exciting features, capabilities, what we talked about, the one which is my favorite is vulnerability tagging. 
ability for you to now tag vulnerabilities based on what is got detected for. If it's a web server, all of this will get detected and will send out to your IT team so that they don't say next time that this is not my vulnerability. And I'm going to quickly also do that particular demo as well. But all of this is of no use like we talked about if all of these risk factors, what we talked about, are not getting fixed. So Qualys platform, out of box, provides you a mechanism to eliminate this risk, not just for vulnerabilities, but also for all these other factors. Now, all of these factors, what we talked about, like Sumit talked about that, it provides a way with correctly showing the right patches for the rightly prioritized vulnerabilities in your environment. See, simply could be provided to your IT team, is available inside their tools like ServiceNow, or can be directly used from the workflow. And exactly same for the open source software. If you get the vulnerability for Python, they can actually customize their remediation. They can actually fix the misconfigurations, et cetera. What's the other part, what Qualys platform provides the elimination for is the misconfiguration. This is amazing because this allows you almost like a sore kind of a capability for cloud infrastructure. Just create a drag and drop mechanism which states if this is for a particular EC2 instance, what is the misconfiguration and how to fix it and it will automatically detect whenever this is found and can be directly integrated with ServiceNow or Jira for the right misconfiguration to be provided to the right team and getting fixed in their own environment. What's the other part Qualys platform provides ability for you to eliminate? When you get all of these unauthorized software which been used in the malicious attacks, it now is going to allow you ability for you to just uninstall the software based on your rules. So if next time you see a checkout app, critical applications running a remote desktop software, you do not have to even like go and find it out. You can just create a rule and it will uninstall itself. Where, but what if my machine goes down? Well, I'm telling you the IT team have so many tools that they can just format the machine and won't tell you. This is one way where you can actually reduce the risk of doing these vulnerability assessment for the software which you do not need in these environments. And it's not just about eliminating, right? You need to be ahead, you need to be preventing as well. What does Qualys do here? Our endpoint security is the only EDR solution which cross maps the attacks happen with the root cause of the attack. If the root cause is a vulnerability or a misconfiguration, it tells you in what are the risks associated with this attack and gives you a way to go and patch it on all the other devices, the same root cause could be applicable or all the assets on which this could be applicable later on so that the attacks don't repeat in your environment. The same vulnerability which could be present in all devices could be patched. And with that, I'm going to quickly do or try and do the demo. All right, are you guys able to see my screen? Uh, stay with me, so I'm, what demo I'm going to provide? I'm going to give a demo of the life in the cyber risk, uh, cyber risk uh, life, how that is without true risk. I'm going to summarize how the true risk is helping. And then going to go ahead and provide like how cyber risk experts like you would be able to measure it, communicate it quickly, and eliminate the risk. So before true risk, right, like what the cyber risk teams are doing. If you look into it, you have 700k vulnerabilities. Well, nothing new, right? Like it happens. When I look at it, what Sumit talked about, when I prioritize those for just critical and high, look at the vulnerabilities which are coming in, 493. So nothing happened. 65% of vulnerabilities are still prioritized by CVSS as critical and high. What would I do now with it? I will go ahead and basically look into all of these data and then download that in nicest Excel sheet, what would I ever get? And then all of this data, I will marry or correlate with one or two thread feeds, what I could get, and will map it to if this is related to CSI exploitable vulnerability catalog or not. Yes, I could use APIs, but at the end is the same. This vulnerability is exploited or not, and then we'll ask beg and get the data for asset criticality from my IT team and then map it in Excel sheet again, 
manually or through APIs, and we'll find out if this particular machine is critical or not. By this time, I'm an expert in doing Excel pivoting. And with that, I would be able to now know if there are vulnerabilities applicable to my critical assets and my CSI exploitable. But I still do not know if it's a risk for my environment or not based on other threats which are happening or if these machines are really critical or not. And now all of this Excel sheet, I'm going to dump it, have somebody do the analysis, and we'll provide to my IT team. And look at this, typical IT scenario. And if you look into it, look at the configuration item. That means the vulnerability is not assigned to anybody. It's all empty. Now what do we need to do? We can just look into who is the infrastructure owner of this asset. And the vulnerability gets assigned to that particular user. And that's one of the reasons what happens is the vulnerability is provided correctly, and those guys say like, hey, I'm not the owner. Because by default now, this data is assigned to the infrastructure owner in their accounts or in their tools, like ServiceNow. And instead of that, the Truris platform allows you to now quickly measure what your Truris looks like across your environment. If my Truris is 733, what are the cloud-related assets applicable for? If I have the critical vulnerabilities or what my true risk looks like for my checkout app, what my true risk looks like for my PCR-related environment, et cetera. Now, I want to see, as a cyber risk expert, what is my risk for the checkout app? So I can quickly find out what is the risk and what are the contributing factors now. If the contributing factors are vulnerabilities or misconfiguration which are actually raising my risk, the true risk factors which are raising my risk. And I see that this particular case that I have a high risk asset having true risk score of 1,000 in this case. So I obviously want to find out as a security analyst what's going on with that machine. And we'll quickly see that this machine has got the data from business CMDB, that this is a part of my checkout app my ServiceNow CMDB is telling, and Qual is tapped into it without needing any Kluge API integration. So I'm able to now see like, hey, who's the, who's the owner? Mark Wagner. Who's the support group, et cetera. All of this data is now Qual is capturing as the attribution factors for this particular asset, and is telling that this is a part of my checkout app. So now Qual is knows this particular machine which is being used for checkout app what my business is saying is most critical. So Qualys map, it, the criticality as high for the same, and your true risk went up for all the issues what it found out. Now let's look into all the risk factors, what Qualys was able to find out, why it's saying it's still 1,000. And one of the reasons what it nicely telling that though this particular vulnerability detected just CVSS score 5.3, CSI exploitable, but look at the number of threat actors which are already exploiting it. When is it talked about? Just this week. And that's why Qualys captured that as the high-risk vulnerability on the high-risk asset, what your business is using for you to look into it from the business perspective. Because it looked into all these 25 plus threat feeds, not just one or two. Same it did for all the misconfigurations, all the all the data which is coming in for even our cloud-related misconfigurations finding, related to open source vulnerabilities and the findings, and the end of life, et cetera, for you to understand what your true risk looks like. And all of this data, now I'm going to provide that as the execution or for the, uh, for the executives as well through our true risk reports. So I can quickly come in and find out, like I can create this true risk report what Sumit talked about what this true risk report for my checkout app looking like for my executives to look into. Just out of box report for them to understand talking their language. My severity is high. How many assets are related? What is the trend looking like? Which are my blind spots? And which of the vulnerabilities or the attributes which are carrying the most risk, which I need to look into? And look at the one in the footer. All of these could be just easily patched by integrated patch management. Another part, knowing the risk of your external attack surface. All of this data is coming in provided as exactly what your risk team would look into it. Like what are my external facing asset, but what is their risk? 
if there are any databases which are exposed with the ports open, et cetera. In addition to that, we provide like, okay, where your assets are, et cetera. The tech debt report, which Sumit talked about, is helping you talk the language what CI wants to talk. If there are any assets in your environment which are going end of life or end of service, and that's one of the reasons why my true risk is increasing because there are no patches available. So it provides you this data to talk that language what your IT team wants to hear. It tells you nicely if what is my total assets tech debt looks like. If there are any assets which are part of checkout app and are critical and have got end of life or end of service, and how many of those in percentage for your CIO to understand that. What's the second thing what Qualys provides? An ability for you, like I mentioned, just create one click rule to say like this particular rule is high severity and I will just create a rule saying any vulnerability I find out next time which has high risk related to ransomware and is related to operating system and is a part of checkout app, don't even ask me next time. Just send it to a particular user which we will showcase can just directly match with service now push mechanism. So when this rule gets created, the data gets sent to service now, your IT team, look at the context they will automatically get. It's high criticality, they get the context. Now what does it include? It includes all the things related to what they want to see as the patches, what they need to apply as a part of the same ticket. Now let's talk into the elimination part, right? What Qualys platform provides to eliminate this risk? One click, now I can just find out all the vulnerabilities, again, marked as ransomware for your desktops. So your machines are not going down or the risk of it is much lower. I can just quickly find those out and reduce it and go ahead and then all the vulnerabilities are gone, patched, so that these attacks don't repeat in environment. Same for the misconfigurations. Now, policy compliance allows you to quickly find out if you have any misconfigurations related to that, along with our total cloud providing you ability to quickly take all of these misconfigurations and eliminate the risk of misconfigurations in the cloud on the same platform. Otherwise, you need to use multiple such tools to eliminate this risk instead of using one way. Another part, just the open source vulnerability, you want to have your custom elimination, custom remediation, you can just quickly create your own scripts and eliminate that risk using the same so that your checkout risk goes down. Uh, could we go back to the PowerPoint? Awesome, and that's how Qualys' true risk platform provides you ability today to measure, communicate, and eliminate risk. But now as we understand, that life is not so simple, right? Your ecosystem of those who may would really love all of you to use Qualys related capabilities, but your ecosystem of security and IT tools is made up of a lot of other tools, right? You're using multiple tools across all of your environment for collecting the data for risk factors. And they're all providing you the risk in different manner. Somebody's one, two, three, somebody's pass and fail, et cetera. Right? Nobody's providing the risk in a uniform manner. What's the second challenge for me in terms of communication now? Communication is, whoops. What's the second channel uh, challenge, what Sumit talked about? Communicating now all of this risk, aggregating from all of these tools what you have, and providing that in terms of the dollar value. What's the intrinsic business value which is in play if I don't take care of this particular risk. Communicating that to your auditors, to your executives in terms of business value and the loss. And importantly, we talked about all of these tools where if you're using Qualys related tools and all these challenges of communicating this risk to all your stakeholders, all of these are now amplified by 10 times, right? When you have to do all of these channels, if you get another tool in cloud, you need to create another integration with your IT team, another integration with your CMDB, et cetera. So all of these tools are increasing the challenges of communication with the right teams. And interestingly, when we looked at all of this data of exploitable vulnerabilities, right? All of these are riskiest vulnerabilities in 2022 and 2023. 
It's taking your IT team 30 days to patch. So the security teams or the service teams are asking, if patch team is not able to patch, what are my options beyond patching? Can I still reduce my risk? Can I still eliminate? Can I still mitigate the risk without needing to be dependent on them to patch because they're giving me the reason of operational impact? So how can I keep the balance of the same? And that's why we are super excited to extend the power of the TrueRisk platform for whole of the ecosystem, where you would be able to now bring in the data across these uh, partners related tools and capabilities from the likes of Microsoft to Synopsys to Normalize to SaveBridge, et cetera, addition to Qualys provided capabilities. And all of this data would come into the platform and would be normalized for you to deduplicate your asset, to merge the asset related telemetry, to merge the security data related telemetry, and would get correlated with these 25 plus threat feeds what we are talking about which will tell you across your ecosystem if you have any risk which is already exploited by malware, ransomware, et cetera, and providing the context if these data points are related to my critical business app or not for you to understand what my true risk now looks like across my ecosystem for data collected by Qualys as well as non-Qualys related data. What does it mean in terms of actually measuring the risk, right? It tells you what my risk looks like, what Sumit talked about, along with the contributing factors. If the risk is coming in from the likes of my, uh, from the likes of my open source software or not. So that means if all of this data is coming in, which is just the laundry list, you'll be able to know what's the criticality of those technologies for which I'm getting the data from multiple tools. What's the other part what I would be able to get? I would be able to now communicate the risk in terms of the dollar value. So simply you would be able to define or if you're using Archer or any kind of other tool, we would be able to pull that data which tells what's the dollar value of all of these apps and then map it to true risk for you to understand across all of your apps, what is my true risk looking like? So like Sumit talked about it, if your true risk for your checkout app could be lower, but if the business value of that is much higher, you would be able to prioritize those over any of the other security issues on any of the other apps. And then essentially, it provides the right data to the right team. And that's been one of the biggest asks from our customers. If Qualys has already created the ecosystem to communicate well with the right vulnerabilities with the right patch data on the right asset to the right owner, can we leverage the same ecosystem to bring the telemetry in, provide that normalization and correlation to now create those tickets for even the other third party related data so that it goes to the right teams, even from the third party non qualis collected asset. What's the other part, right, what we talked about? Again, like really excited to talk about this risk eliminate, which allows you to comprehensively eliminate the risk of your security factors by using multiple techniques from remediation, mitigation, to compensation of the risk. So you all know about our patch management, which is our remediation capability, already allows 2,000 plus customers to patch or change the configurations for them to reduce the risk. Now, addition to that, we're enhancing, providing another capability in the true risk eliminate, allows you to also map the risk mitigation if you have any configuration changes, what you could do. Additionally, ability for you to just virtually guard the exploited vulnerabilities without needing to patch. Addition to that, also ability for you to orchestrate an action in third party tools like your firewall if you do not want to patch the vulnerabilities, essentially allowing you ability to comprehensively eliminate the risk going beyond dependency on patching. And that would be applicable, available across the board for your business apps where Qualys will be providing you the risk mitigation plan adaptively telling you in cases if you have servers 
use the risk mitigation versus if you have desktops, use the patch management solutions for you to go ahead and adaptively reduce your risk, eliminate the risk using multiple approaches. And all of these capabilities we are going to talk about in Iran and uh, Mehul's session, where we will talk about 13 plus mitigation techniques, what we are coming out with allows you to use um, a Qualys platform to mitigate the risk, virtually patch so that it creates the temporary guard or compensate the risk if you do not want to use the patching mechanism, essentially taking the time out from the machines being available for attackers for your exposures. And with that, I'm going to say that that's the way typically the true risk platform is been allowing customers today to measure, communicate and eliminate risk. And going forward, it's also going to allow you to extend that power for whole of your ecosystem, which could be made up of any other security tools. With that, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please do let me know.